I'm Cormac Malley, son of Ernie Malley, an Irish militant hero, uh, author, and participant in the Irish War of Independence and the Civil War. So I have a question for you. How does a young medical student like Ernie O'Malley rise from being an uninformed nationalist to the rank of Assistant Chief of Staff of the entire Irish Republican Army in a period of mere six years? It's a long journey. It's an interesting journey. and I want to invite you to join me. So we first of all see Ernie in 1916 as a medical student where having read the Proclamation of Independence that morning he immediately as a man of action and you'll see this characteristic throughout his life takes a gun that evening and helps start the fight against Britain. He is not a nationalist in the normal sense that he has become involved uh, in activities but his heart has been turned. So for the next couple of years while he is a, a medical student he has one uh, incredible activity which what does a young soldier want to do? He wants to get a gun and so Ernie O'Malley dresses up in his brother's British Army uniform and walks down to the headquarters of the British Army in Ireland at the uh, Dublin Castle walks in, asks for a permit to acquire a gun and ammunition. An audacious request. And yet, he is granted that. He uses the excuse that he's very concerned, he's back from the front, and he sees all these rebels around, and he wants to be protected. So that little story that got to the attention of Michael Collins, who was uh, the director of intelligence, and what happens when Ernie O'Malley goes on the run in early 1918 is he reports into the IRA and reports to Michael Collins. So Michael Collins knows the stuff of which uh, Ernie O'Malley is made and sends him out as an organizer uh, to organize in 18 different counties around the country. And this journey which he goes on uh, of organizing uh, companies, uh, battalions, brigades, and trying to train people, trying to get them excited by Irish independence, by uh, trying to get them marching back and forth, and in the capacity so that they can take action. He is in each county or each brigade area maybe three to four weeks, and then he leaves. So he doesn't know what the consequences are of his participation. So you see this part of this journey is what actions he takes in each county. Is starting off in Monaghan, he participates in the attack on in February 1920 on the Ballytrain RIC barracks. He then goes down to Tipperary, participates in several there, into Cork. And you see throughout this period how this young fellow uh, he is still only uh, 22 and he uh, fights. He participates in breaking slates over the RIC barracks and, bore, uh, and pouring petrol down and having flames and being injured. He is captured. He, uh, he's tortured in Dublin Castle. He escapes from Kilmainham Jail and he continues to fight. So uh, he also uh, is a big note taker, is interested in art, and you see the colorful character of this person who has a certain degree of tremendous integrity and not a particularly social person, but a commanding presence. And you watch his rise through the War of Independence, just as the rise of Irish independent spirit comes in trying to overthrow the colonial mantle that has been placed on Ireland for centuries. And so that results in the Anglo-Irish Treaty of 1921, which unfortunately leads to a civil war. But in any case, throughout that, you see an action of a committed person who is actively doing things with his commitment. So I want to invite you 
um, on this journey and on a monthly basis we will be telling uh, what happens in each of the locations that Ernie O'Malley participates in and how uh, his struggle, uh, personal struggle, participates in the ultimate freedom of Ireland.